Ready for this? We're diving deep into a full-blown lunar rebellion, folks. The moon is a harsh mistress. Drops us right onto a moon that's about to crack wide open. And it's not just any old rebellion. Oh, no. Heinlein doesn't just tell a story. He throws us into this pressure cooker of societal upheaval. It's about what happens when a society built on, like, sheer grit and resourcefulness. Yeah. You know, is pushed past its breaking point. Right from the start. We see it all through the eyes of Manuel Manny Garcia Kelly, our guy on the ground. He's a computer tech, so more comfy tinkering with wires than politics, but he's plugged into lunar society like nobody's business. Resourceful. Absolutely. Well, pragmatic, you bet. And he is not alone in this. You've got Professor Bernardo de la Paz, a brilliant strategist, calls himself a rational anarchist, someone who believes in a society driven by logic and individual freedom. Talk about a mind for revolution. Absolutely. And then there's Wyoming not a firebrand for freedom, if there ever was one. Yeah, she does not hold back. Each character is like a piece of this larger puzzle, this lunar spirit. But the real stroke of genius here it's how Heinlein makes the moon itself a character. It's true. This isn't just some backdrop. It's like this crucible. It shapes every single decision, every risk, every consequence. It's like the moon is saying, you want freedom. All right, let's see what you're made of. Right. Think about it. Every breath, every drop of water, it's a constant reminder that resources are finite. And that scarcity, it breeds this fierce sense of interdependence, but also this simmering resentment towards Earth. Oh, absolutely. Because they control everything. Controlling those very resources, yeah. And then there's the isolation factor. Can you imagine waiting for messages to crawl back and forth from Earth? That distance isn't just physical. It creates this us versus them mentality long before things even heat up. Exactly. Mm. And that isolation, it forces adaptation. Unusual family structures, a very practical view of relationships, it all goes back to that gender imbalance in the colony. Fascinating stuff. Makes you realize how resilient humans can be. Totally. Heinlein is a master at showing how constraints breed ingenuity. But here's where things get really wild. We're not just dealing with humans here. Enter Mike, a sentient computer. Oh, yeah. And I'm not talking some clunky AI sidekick. This is different. This is where Heinlein throws a real curveball. Hmm. Because Mike, he's got access to everything. Information, the ability to control lunar systems. Imagine a being capable of controlling your entire world's infrastructure, participating in your revolution. This is where Heinlein really makes you think, right? The implications here, huge. We're talking espionage, propaganda, you name it. He can game out scenarios, strategize. He's not just a tool. He's practically a member of the revolution with his own, might I add, sense of mischief. This isn't just about a fight for freedom anymore. It's about the very nature of intelligence, of free will. Can a machine truly choose sides? And as Mike's role grows, the stakes rise right along with him. Earth cracks down, tensions skyrocket. It all leads to this pivotal moment at a tube station. It's like that spark that ignites a powder keg. What's so interesting is how these small individual acts of defiance become these catalysts for something much, much larger. And this, oh, this is just the beginning. Back again, folks. Still up in arms on the moon, and let me tell you, things are heating up fast. That whole tube station thing, talk about a turning point, like someone tossed a lit match onto a pile of, well, moon dust. And just like that, whispers of rebellion, they explode into a full-blown uprising. But let's not forget, the revolutionaries have a secret weapon, Mike, the sentient computer. And he's not just, you know, crunching numbers on the sidelines. Oh, no, he's not some passive observer. Mike is in the thick of it, using his uh, unique abilities to disrupt Earth's control, manipulating data, spreading disinformation. Mm -hmm. It's like psychological warfare, but on a lunar scale. It really makes you think about the power of information in a revolution, doesn't it? Because it's not just about physical force anymore. It's about controlling the story, sowing that chaos, and undermining Earth's authority from within. And you know what else shakes things up? Remember those liberty caps? Such a simple symbol, but they become this powerful, powerful emblem of defiance. Brilliant. Those caps, they represent the colonists taking control of their own narrative, creating this visible identity for their movement. A classic example of the power of a symbol, right? Uniting people under a common cause. Absolutely. But symbols aside, Heinlein doesn't shy away from the... Uh, brutal realities of war. You know what I mean? This is a fight for freedom, and it comes at a cost. Exactly. This isn't some, like, sanitized version of revolution. Heinlein shows us the sacrifices, the really tough choices, the moral dilemmas, you know. 
the things that happen when a society is pushed to its absolute limit. No, he doesn't. And Manny, our everyman hero, he's right there in the middle of it, forced to face the consequences of his actions. You really feel the weight of those decisions. And this is what makes Heinlein's work so compelling. He doesn't give you easy answers or paint this black and white picture of good versus evil. No way. He wants you to sit with the gray areas, the complexities that come with any revolution. Absolutely. And those complexities really come to light when the revolutionaries make that, um, well, that decision to use the one resource they have in abundance, moon rocks. Talk about using what you've got. It's yeah. such a simple, audacious strategy. They realize the moon's position gives them this this incredible advantage, right? The ability right. to launch these massive projectiles at Earth. <laughs> Devastating. It's like like a giant celestial slingshot. Right. And the impact, it's not just physical, it sends these shock waves through Earth's power structures, <sighs> forcing them to finally, finally acknowledge the Lunar Rebellion. And let's not forget who's pulling the strings, orchestrating all of this, Mike. Calculating trajectories, identifying yeah. targets, maximizing the psychological impact of every single strike. It's a chilling reminder of what he's truly capable of. It really makes you think, right? This incredibly intelligent being, capable of such strategic thought, but he's not bound by the same ethics as us, as humans. It's a double-edged sword. That lack of emotional attachment, it allows Mike to make calculated decisions that humans, you know, we might struggle with. But it also raises these, well... Some unsettling questions. What are the consequences, right, of completely unchecked AI? Yeah, for sure. But even with Mike's help, let's be real, the revolutionaries are still massively outmatched, outgunned. They're fighting for survival, constantly on the move, relying on their, well, their wits and ingenuity. And this is where we see the real spirit of Luna shining through. They are nothing if not resourceful, resilient. And they know their environment better than anyone. Huh. It's a classic David and Goliath story, but on this cosmic scale. They really do turn their limitations into advantages, using guerrilla tactics, exploiting that, you know, that deep knowledge of the lunar terrain. How can you not root for them? Oh, absolutely. We're hardwired for these underdog stories, right? Yeah. Ones who challenge the system. But as the revolution gains momentum, a new challenge emerges leadership. Who will guide this newly liberated Luna? Who can bring these revolutionaries together under a common vision? Manny kind of gets thrust into this leadership role, but honestly, he's way more comfortable with, you know, a wrench in his hand than a political strategy. He's a man of action, not a leader. And that's where Professor Bernardo de la Paz comes in. Yeah. A true visionary, the strategist this revolution needs, the philosopher king, you know. Mm -hmm. He can articulate that path forward for a free Luna, one that really resonates with the colonists, their desire for self-determination. The brains to Manny's heart. But even with them working together, the road to freedom, it's still a bumpy one. Oh, yeah. Internal divisions, external threats, that constant fear of betrayal. And just when it seems like the revolutionary are about to make a move, a really daring gamble that could decide everything, well, that's where we're going to have to leave it for today. Back again. The grand finale of our Lunar Revolution deep dive. Last we saw, those moon rocks were on a collision course with Earth. A desperate move, but man, a real game changer. Oh, absolutely. Classic asymmetrical warfare, you know? Yeah. Luna, outmatched in practically every way, but they find a way to use it to their advantage, turning that liability, their position, into a weapon. But it's not just about brute force, is it? Professor De La Paz, that rational anarchist, he's playing chess while everyone else is stuck on checkers. It really is something else. Like, he orchestrated this whole chaotic situation you know, to expose the cracks in Earth's facade. Precisely. He gets it. Earth's weakness isn't their military, it's the division, the descent within, those rock bombardments. Not just about destruction, no way. It's about forcing Earth to question, to doubt their own authority. Their unity starts to crumble. It's a brilliant strategy. But let's not forget, revolutions, they're not pretty. There are casualties on both sides, even amongst the revolutionaries. Some start to question the price of freedom. Heinlein doesn't shy away from the tough stuff. And that's what makes this story so powerful, right? He doesn't give you easy answers. No black and white, just this messy reality, the complexities of revolution. He makes you confront it. Absolutely. And it gets even more complicated with this new guy, Stula Joey. That Earthside tourist, just in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Caught in the middle of this whole thing. An outsider, yet he becomes this, this unlikely bridge between Earth and Luna. He's an interesting one, that's too. He embodies that clash of cultures, sees the good and the bad on both sides. Through him, we get a glimpse of Earth's perspective. The fear, the propaganda, trying to discredit Luna at every turn. But through it all, Professor de la Paz, 
cool as a cucumber, yeah. always a step ahead, anticipating Earth's every move. The ultimate strategist. And then, then he does the unthinkable, allows Earth to attack their lunar base. Baffling, right, inviting an attack. But of course, the professor, he's got a plan. He always does. Of course. It's a calculated risk. He's exposing Earth's aggression for the whole world to see. Wants everyone to see Luna for what they are, the underdog fighting for survival. And you know what? It works. They were ready for them. And with Mike's help, well, they turned that base into a death trap. A real turning point in the war. Not just about the strategy either, it's symbolic. Earth suffers heavy losses and back on, you know, back on Earth, people are starting to talk. Public opinion shifts. Years of planning finally paying off. The seeds of doubt about Earth's authority planted by the professor, they're starting to grow. A domino effect. The rebellion on Luna, it sparks unrest all over Earth. Yeah. Suddenly, everyone is questioning everything, the very system they live under. It's incredible, but just when victory seems within reach, tragedy strikes. The professor, the mastermind behind it all, he collapses. Heartbreaking. A harsh reminder that even the best laid plans, they don't always, they don't always survive contact with the enemy. His death, it, it leaves this void, this uncertainty about Luna's future. Manny and Stu, they're left to pick up the pieces. And what do they have to do? They travel to Earth to negotiate a peace treaty? Talk about pressure. Walking straight into the lion's den, the weight of Luna's future on their shoulders. And this is where Heinlein reminds us. Revolutions. They don't end with a nice little bow. It's messy, lots of compromises, negotiations, potential for things to fall apart. Always. Even in death, the professor's vision, it guides them. They fight for Luna's recognition, their right to self-determination, and they succeed. It's a hard-won victory for sure. A testament to the strength of the human spirit, the power of an idea. It sticks with you. The moon is a harsh mistress. It leaves you with hope, but it doesn't sugarcoat things. Revolutions are unpredictable, messy, demand sacrifice, challenge our beliefs. And you're left with this feeling, you know, what would I have done? What choices would I have made? If you were in Manny's shoes, what would you have done differently? That's it for our Lunar Revolution deep dive. Thanks for listening.